Our first panel deals with a topic that every company leading in the sustainability space has had to strategically prioritize and successfully execute in order to be successful. How do you integrate and demonstrate sustainability across all functions of your enterprise? And how do you deliver and show return on investment for your ESG goals and commitments? That's our first panel. With us today, to help us have this discussion in our panel, our moderator, we have with us Ishri Kamlesh Bhai Yagnik, who's the president of SRK Knowledge Foundation and the chief resilience officer at Surat Climate, Climate Change Trust, and our esteemed panelists. We would like to felicitate all of them. May I request the pleasure to have Shri Kamlesh Bhai Yagnik on the dais as the moderator of the first panel discussion. A round of applause to Shri Kamlesh Bhai Yagnik. I take the pleasure, the honor, to, to introduce to you Shri Prashant Bhai Tiwari, the Chief Sustainability Officer with Amara Raja Group. I request a quick video presentation to help us understand more about Shri Prashant Tiwari Ji. Welcome, sir, to the dais. Let's all give a round of applause to Prashant Ji and hear about and watch about the great work that he's been doing. Mr. Prashant Tiwari has an immense and wide-ranging experience in planning and executing sustainability roadmaps across multiple sectors, including the automotive, FMCG, natural resource and mining industries. He is an expert in topics covering corporate sustainability, ESG strategy and reporting, carbon credits and more. Prior to joining Amara Raja Group, Mr. Tiwari led successful project at Vedanta Resources, Coca-Cola Company and Hindustan Unilever. Please welcome Shri Prashant Tiwari, Chief Sustainability Officer, Amara Raja Group. May I request Sri Nidav Bhai Narula to kindly come forward to felicitate Prashantji. Thank you so much, sir. I now take the honor to introduce to you Sri Hardeep Singh Ji. Sri Hardeep Singh Ji is the President and Global Head Sales and Marketing of Goldie Solar Private Limited. He's such an inspiration to us and has been contributing so amazingly to our entire organization and also for the well-being. Let us give a round of applause to Sri Hardeep Singh Ji. May I take the honor to request Sri Utkarsh Narola to kindly come forward to present a bouquet to Hardeep Ji. It's such a pleasure to have you, sir, in this panel discussion. I also take the honor to introduce to you Sri Anandya Chaudhary Ji, who is a country manager of energy transitions with Shell India. May we have a quick video presentation to know more about Anindya Ji. Mr. Anindya Chaudhary is deeply committed to the energy transition and moving from fossil fuel reliance to clean energy. He is passionate about access to reliable, uninterrupted and affordable energy across different parts of the country. Mr. Chaudhary lent his experience to Reliance Industries and NTPC. Please welcome Anindya Chaudhary, Country Manager, Energy Transitions Programme, Shell. Let's all give a round of applause as we welcome Anindya Ji. I request Akshay Dholakya Ji to kindly come forward to present a floral bouquet to Anindya Ji. Welcome, sir. I now take the pleasure and the honor to introduce to you the next uh, panelist today. That's CA Preeti Savla Ji. Preeti Ji, who is a chairperson of Sustainability Reporting Standards Board and also the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Let us have 
Uh, welcome, ma'am. Let's give a round of applause to Madam Preeti. C.A. Preeti Savla has been instrumental in developing sustainability reporting frameworks and promoting CSR best practices among businesses. Under her leadership, the Sustainable Reporting Standards Board has developed the ICAI Sustainability Reporting Framework, which provides guidance to companies on reporting their sustainability performance and impacts. C.A. Savla has won several awards and accolades. Please welcome C.A. Preeti Savla, Chairperson, Sustainability Reporting Standards Board, ICAI. I request uh, Prabhu uh, Dhulakya ji to kindly come forward to welcome Madam Preeti. Welcome ma'am, it's an honor to have you here with us. So we are all set and ready for this thought-provoking discussion. And Kamleshi, this group of experts um, is completely with you now and your capable hands all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Uh, today morning, I called up uh, Shreyans Bhai and uh, I asked him, have you read uh, today's newspaper? He said, yes, you know, I've read it. So I said, you know, like, I'm sure no one will come because everyone will be running to the bank to exchange that 2,000 rupees note. Later in the lunchtime and morning we saw, we had a full house. Then during the lunchtime again, I went to Sriyans Bhai and I told him, Sriyans Bhai, I'm sure after lunch people will go because they still have to exchange their 2,000 notes. But the house is full here. What is important and what we can infer is, that's something more important than our 2,000 rupees note is being discussed here. And that's the value which, you know, we all have it. And I'm very, very thankful to all of you for remaining present in this. And this is an esteemed panel. And when we are talking about panel discussions, it is, you know, like grilling them, asking, you know, the panelists. And as we know, we have panel from varied sectors. We have professionals here. We have industrial persons here. We have people from services and manufacturing. So it's a great panel, and I'm sure next 45 to 50 minutes, what we are given, we'll have a lot to know from this panelist. Uh, so before wasting much time, you know, I will ask one common question, and then I'll go very, very specific. So, uh, you know, the panelist, very, very quick answer, you know, I want to know, because since morning we've been talking about sustainability. So what does sustainability mean to you? So if you can, you know, like very briefly introduce sustainability to our audience here. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you have to give a personal context. So I've been working with Shell for the last 25 years. And sustainability, I find, is sort of ingrained in our blood. We don't look at sustainability as a, as a special new thing that is being done. And we can come across various examples. You know, in, in Surat, or near Surat, we have an LNG terminal which was created at a cost of $700 million. And I think we set great examples in how the project was set up uh, safely, without causing any harm to the environment, and looking after the communities around it. So briefly, I'll just end here. At the outset, let me appreciate and congratulate SRK Group, Govind Kaka, for organizing such a wonderful conference on sustainability over here. And I am really amazed to see the culture what the SRK Group has built over a period of time. So my congratulations to entire SRK Group. As regards to sustainability, uh, in one minute I can say that when I have been given the charge of Sustainability Reporting Standard Board, I have seen one two minutes small video. Nature require people or people require nature. So, yes, what is the answer? Nature require people or people require nature? Yes. And people require nature and for maintaining 
our next generation to have our next generation we have to care take care of nature and what we are doing so we have to be keep we have to do all those things which by which we can take care of nature to have our next generation otherwise our people also nowadays animals are becoming extinct but if we are not taking care of nature of environment the governance part the social part we will become the extincts like animals and that is all sustainability with this example hello yeah so first let me start with thanking srk group for inviting us here it has been a wonderful experience since yesterday and extending this hospitality uh, i must also congratulate uh, srk group for taking this audacious target we are hearing 2024 for net zero uh, before i uh, talk about what sustainability means to me as an individual let me give a brief of where i come from so i represent amara raja group uh, we are a energy and mobility company and uh, you know us by uh, brand names like amron uh, power zone uh, quantas uh what we realize is our role uh, the energy storage industry role in making this switch to renewables as well as ev is very critical if india has to achieve its net zero target this industry has to uh, come up and uh, deliver uh, we also are into lot of our product offerings if you look at it we manufacture uh, lead acid battery but we also have lithium ion batteries which are going into Uh, two wheelers and three wheelers uh, we also manufacture ev chargers uh, battery management system uh, so if you look at uh, when i when i look at amar raja as a business sustainability is our business i mean when we perform well on uh, financial parameters chances are we are doing better on non financial and energy parameters as well so sustainability for me if i can uh, term it in one word it's an opportunity for a lot of people who are sitting here i think this is the land of entrepreneurs and new energy uh, this objective towards net zero brings in lot of opportunities and we should look at it uh, <clears throat> i'd like to you know talk about sustainability on behalf of the common man if you you know the word sustainability net zero they are so complex eight out of 10 common people would not even know what you are talking about if you talk to them if you utter these words so we need to make them as simple and as uh, you know relatable as possible if you actually want these uh, targets and goals to be achieved they are very simple as simple as leaving your you know shutting your tap off while you are brushing your teeth switching the lights off in your room while you are walking out of the room so yeah, they are actually as simple as that but uh, you know in in such forums you know we uh, are using such jargons and uh, you know so they will not uh, it, it's not relatable to everyone so firstly i would like to make it uh, you know we uh, appeal to everyone to make it as simple so that it's uh, you know everyone understands that it's something which we do every day actually it's not something which a company has to do or a government has to do is something which all of us can do every day in every step of our lives and secondly you know there are three dimensions to uh, sustainability this sustainability of society sustainability of environment and sustainability of the economy so unless all three of this happens together hand in hand so the net zero goal is only going to remain a goal so we'll have to you know work uh, as they say walk the talk on all the three fronts and when we say society it starts from all of us sitting in this room very nice uh, sustainability is all about advocating a generation which is not yet born aaj hum un logo ke liye baat kar rahe hain un loke ke liye chinta kar rahe hain jinka aaj abhi tak janm nahi hua hai so that is you know like all about sustainability now you know like uh, taking further uh, see uh, in in businesses there is a major challenge and how do we actually you know ensure that how are you educating your team and a larger ecosystem 
about both, about your commitment and the progress you are making. Because in ESG, you are making a commitment as well as it is mandatory for you to report. So how, you know, you are managing this ecosystem. So if you can tell us, Mr. Chaudhary. Thank you for the question. And, and I had forgotten to acknowledge and thank Sarke for inviting me here. So uh, many thanks for your hospitality. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah? OK. Uh, so I'm not an ESG professional, so I can only tell you what I've experienced as an employee of a company that has put sustainability ingrained in our various systems. So we have, so the governance side of things has always been well established. So we have financial reporting, et cetera, that goes on. Uh, the social side has also been well recognized. We have got how we engage with the community, how we keep our people safe, how we give safety to our people, not only physical, but emotional safety in the workplace. So, so that has been covered. On environment also, on our emissions, pollutions, we have, this needs to go up and down. So, so these aspects have also been covered. What has recently changed is our GHG or carbon emissions related commitments and pledges. Now this is something that, so we have also got a 2050 pledge of being net zero business by 2050 covering scope one, two and three. And this comes from the top. And it gets, it's embedded in the tasks and targets of, of the people down the businesses, so everybody's aware. And not only that, senior executive pay is related to the performance in achieving the year-by-year -year targets associated with this pathway. So this is how we have done it. Mr. Saula, if you can add on to this. So, uh, at ICAI, we are the regulators, and uh, the Sustainability Board has been a uh, pioneer in India at ICI in the world. So nowadays, everyone in the world at international level also, everyone is talking about the sustainability. But in India, we have started talking long back. And at least in our communities, the Indians are like, uh, sustainability is imbibed in their families, in their blood. Because as uh, uh, Sir has rightly said, in every day actually we are having the sustainability because we have been taught in our life by our forefathers. Agar aapko pankha nahi chahiye to switch off kar dijiye. So we are so careful about single small small things also. We all people are vegetarians and generate you know less em emit less carbons and these are the basic things which Indians have and that is all are talking now at the world level. As regards to the reporting requirements, now when the tone or tone at the top is like that, at India, our Honorable Prime Minister says in COP26 at Glasgow conference that India wants to be the net zero carbon neutral by 2070. And by 2030, he has given certain panchamrut to be followed. And those things are coming from, and actually the regulators have started giving uh, the reporting requirements uh, for certain uh, level of companies. So now what happens since 2012, these reporting requirements have come by Ministry of Corporate Affairs. But over a period of time, I am not going into the details, but over a period of time, it has, the reporting requirements have become now mandatory. For March 22-23, it is mandatory that BRSR should be reported. So at least that has started. And from 23 onwards, post April 2023, it has this assurance has also become mandatory. So at least now, and this is for at present for top 1,000 listed companies. And there are nine principles, essential principles, and leadership principles. These are uh, essential principles are mandatory and leadership principles are uh, voluntary to be followed. However, I know that this will not be applicable to majority SMEs and the companies which are not in this league of top 1000 listed companies. But in that, the requirement is that that supply chain is also included. So when supply chain, if you top 1000 listed companies, hai, 
उनको उनकी उसमें रिपोर्टिंग रिक्वायरमेंट है कि आप अगर आपके वेंडर से परचेज करते हो तो वो वेंडर भी ई एस जी कंप्लाइंट होना चाहिए सो वेन इट इज अ सप्लाई चेन मैंडेटरी इज रिक्वायर्ड एट दिस रिपोर्टिंग लेवल तो नाउ दिस कंपनीज हैव स्टार्टेड कि हम जहाँ से परचेज करते हैं तो वो वेंडर्स आर ऑल्सो ई एस जी कंप्लाइंट होने चाहिए तो सस्टेनेबिलिटी का टैग होना चाहिए सो वेन दिस लेवल रिक्वायरमेंट इज देयर सो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ नेक्स्ट वन टू थ्री ईयर्स लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बहुत सारा कुछ होने वाला है एंड दिस ई एस जी विल भी अभी जो किसको पता नहीं है सस्टेनेबिलिटी वो सारे लोगों को सस्टेनेबिलिटी पता हो जाएगा सो वी रेगुलरली वर्क अलॉन्ग विथ से बी वी हैव डेवलप डिस्कलोजर रिक्वायरमेंट्स विच विल बी मैंडेटरी द ग्रीन दिस ग्रीन हाउस गेस स्टेटमेंट्स दैट इज एश्योरेंस एंगेजमेंट विच इज मैंडेटरी रिक्वायर टू बी फॉलोड बाई द मेम्बर्स हु आर फॉलोइंग दिस अगेन वी ऑल हैव डेवलप वी हैव ऑल्सो डेवलप सस्टेनेबिलिटी रिपोर्टिंग मेच्योरिटी मॉडल सो उसमें आपको ई एस जी एनवायरमेंटल सोशल और गवर्नेंस में आप क्या क्या एक्टिविटी कर रहे हो ये मॉडल वेबसाइट पे है आप उसमें आपका सारा डिटेल डाल दीजिए उसका आउटपुट आ जाएगा कि आप कंप्लाइंट है और अगर है तो कितने लेवल पे है पचास टका है सिक्सटी परसेंट है कि सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट है और यू आर लीडिंग बाय एन एग्जांपल सो ऑल दिस एक्टिविटीज वी डू फॉर ऑल द अवर मेंबर्स द पब्लिक एट लार्ज द अवेयरनेस वी ऑल्सो डू so these are the activities the requirements reporting requirements will change the entire world and india india is taking a leap in this no it's it's a great information that esg hum you know esg ke andar kaam kar rahe hain aur yadi hum kaam karna chahte hain to how do we do that and jaisa madam ne bataya ki you know there are platforms available where you enter your data and you get to know where do you stand in the scale from 0 to 100 where do you stand so that is a great information uh, mr tiwari if you want to add uh, something on this so at amar raja uh, sustainability has been an integral part of our value system not everybody use the term sustainability but uh, what we have started doing since last year as uh, we started looking at capability building program so we had some 23 programs combination of webinars classroom instruction There were certification programs, and we covered all the verticals, starting from supply chain, finance, and the focus of this program was how does your role interact with sustainability. Second thing which we realized is there is no better way of learning than doing it yourself. So we started a sustainability council, and uh, uh, the chairman of uh, the sustainability council is the CEO, and all the line function leaders they are the members of it. and everybody owns a responsibility so there are the people who are driving energy and carbon projects uh, supply chain projects financial disclosures so the leaders now own a responsibility of sustainability and they are answerable in the sustainability council over and above that to take this message further down we created cells like energy cells water cells uh, we also did multiple programs in the nearby community to make them more aware about sustainability and this year what we are coming out with is an induction module let's say you are a supply chain manager it becomes mandatory for you to log in as a 2 hour program where it takes you uh, through uh, basically what does your job entails what is the interaction with sustainability and how it is going to look like in 2030 and what are the skills you need to have mandatorily built in for you to deliver better in 2030 so these are some of the things which we are doing one more thing uh, which we are planning to do this year is a uh, train the trainer program so we are uh, developing 70 sustainability champions within the organization so amar raja i mean you know it about the battery company but there is lot we do i mean we have infrastructure business electronics power foods and beverages so we are developing these 70 sustainability champions who would engage with the workforce of 16000 employees during the year to talk about sustainability in the way they can understand not everybody needs to understand what is cdp disclosure but they probably need to understand what they can do to conserve water conserve electricity about the social aspects to it so this is how we are trying to spread this message uh, quickly i will talk about our promoters the leaders because end of the day the messaging from the top decides how the organization performs so yesterday only our uh, chairman 
Mr. Jaydev Galla, who is a parliamentarian, and he has been pretty vocal around climate change and environmental related issues. So he was in Chicago for a few days training program on climate change along with other parliamentarians. So we are making sure that leadership is also engaged in some very high quality training programs so that understanding around disclosures, uh, CDPs, this is understood by everyone and all. Well, uh, at Goldie Solar, I think we are all very blessed uh, to have uh, promoters, you know, where, uh, who are having DNA in, uh, sustainability in their DNA. And it's a day-to-day, -day, you know, it's a lifestyle for all of us. And our parent SRK, uh, you know, is going to be one of the first companies of that size to become net zero in 2024. And uh, other than that, we are, you know, doubly blessed because we manufacture a product which is going to help others become sustainable. So we are manufacturing solar panels, so which is helping others become sustainable. So we are not only as uh, we ourselves are doing it, but we are helping others also. Now, as far as uh, we ourselves at Goldie Solar is concerned, so you know we are uh, also partnering with our vendors, with our other stakeholders to you know try and bring uh, what we was talking in the morning reusable, you know to reuse, to recycle things to make. Uh, that's how we are trying to support sustainability at our end. Give, just to give you a small example, you know, there was a vendor from whom we were getting material on these wooden pallets. Uh, so, you know, there are these hundreds of pallets which were coming in on a weekly basis. And uh, it was such a waste of wood, a precious, uh, you know, natural resource like wood. So I'm sure there was be, must be thousands of trees which must be, you know, being sacrificed uh, on a monthly basis to, uh, you know, bring that... Uh, material into our uh, plant. So we worked with our uh, partner, with our vendor, and uh, you know, we asked him, why don't, don't you reuse this? You know, when your uh, vehicle comes to deliver, he can take back the uh, ones which have uh, been used and again reuse them. So we started off that and we started reusing them. And uh, so by uh, saving a few hundred trees, now, what was happening is it was not becoming 100% practical because half were breaking, half were becoming unusable. So then we sat with him and worked out a completely, you know, out of the box kind of a, a, a arrangement where we came up with a, a proposal to have a steel pellets. So now uh, we, are, we have completely done away with the use of woods where, where we were using thousands of these pellets on a weekly basis. So now the material comes on steel pellets and those steel pellets go back to the vendor and he's, you know, using them. So there's a saving of cost, there's saving of hundreds of trees and, uh, you know, it's also contributing to the sustainable goal. So these are some of the small things uh, which we are trying to do and also we are trying to get into the sustainable production processes by, you know, uh, trying to use more of uh, uh, solar power for manufacturing processes for uh, by recycling the water, uh, you know, the waste water which comes out. Uh, although we don't use any natural water in the production process, but whatever in a normal day-to-day -day use, so just trying to recycle those. So these are some of the small ways uh, which we are trying to contribute in uh, trying to attain this net zero. Great. Uh, that's, that's very nice of you. Uh, and, and as we all know, uh, Companies Act 20. 13, it brought two terms, you know, into our being. One is CSR and second is ESG. And CSR, you know, essentially talks about a qualitative change, a qualitative implementation, where ESG dictates, you know, how much you are doing it. What is a quantitative analysis of that? So with that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to slightly deviate from asking questions to the panelists I would rather, you know, like take questions, you know, from the house. So if, you know, like any individuals, you know, have any specific questions for the panel, panel will be more than happy to answer. So I, I invite some quick questions, you know, from the panelists, please. And next one also, just raise the hand so that Mike can come to you. 
so my question is kind of directed towards Madam Saula. So I, I, I represent a climate tech startup. We are based in Mumbai and we offer a carbon and ESG management software platform to help organizations ac across all sectors to account their green, uh, greenhouse gases. So uh, our target is to enable the MSMEs and the SME, SMEs to go greener. But uh, the natural roadblock that they face is that what is the incentive for them? So at a regulatory level, could there be some sort of incentive? Is there any existing incentive for them to, you know, uh, meet with these compliances and go greener and, and help, you know, contribute towards someone else's scope three accounting? Because at the moment, it just seems like an additional financial burden for them where they, where they are just trying to... Um, you know, exist in a cutthroat competition. So is there something which can be done for them? I, I speak on behalf of so many uh, diamond traders and small and medium businesses out here. So if you could help us with that. Thank you. Ma'am, ma ma uh, can we take a couple of questions together? Because, you know, okay. for the want of time, we are now... The gentleman on the back side. I have one uh, small question. Why the government uh, is not forcing mobile manufacturers to uh, manufacture common mobile charger? Uh, it okay. is one of the ways uh, uh, of reducing carbon footprint. Okay, yeah, we got the point. There. Yeah, myself, Harshal here. Yeah. I had a query, uh, question with regards to, uh, like we incentivize, uh, government incentivize like fame to subsidy can we have something uh, for the common people for the industry where pe industries are incentivized for uh, doing sustainable business like iso mark is there for standards can we have such standards uh, again met to ma'am where sustainability is measured of a particular corporate and then the corporate is motivated to do sustainable business. Okay, and then last one from here, and then we may have some more questions if time permits. I'm having two questions right now. One thing is when, uh, when the government comes with the idea of 2% of the PAT as a CSR activity, why don't we think something in those lines and make it mandatory to spend on the sustainability or the environment? So that is first question. Second thing, uh, when we talk about carbon emissions, so we talk about carbon emissions at very different levels. So one thing is, of course, the vehicles that are polluting, and then we talk about the uh, uh, wastage, we talk about uh, waterways. So there are n number of wastage that we talk about. Uh, but whether there is any matrix, how we are going to measure the individual carbon footprint, that is when we are going to, let's say, I want to travel from Surat to Mumbai, I can take a, a train, I can take an aeroplane, I can take a, probably a public transport system. So in that way, whether we can, we can capture the carbon emissions of a, of a group company or of a company, but at more at an individual level. Thank you. Okay. So the panelists sure. can answer. We can start with the madam, I think, and then everyone can opine. So all the questions combinedly, I think uh, I'll answer. So it is all about the trust and the confidence what we build and the, what the companies and the businesses build among the, their investors, their stakeholders. So uh, if we, uh, the, whenever I just give you an example, so whenever as an investor or as a trader we invest in a company, always uh, the people see the profitability of the company. If the company is making good profits, you know, they invest in the shares of the company. And in the COVID times, uh, this uh, capital market, everyone knows how it was. And uh, accordingly, they invest in the shares of the company. If the profits are good, they invest. But let me tell all of you, the, this 3P concept has become becoming the change. So earlier, it was profitability, people, and then planet. But now the things are coming in the reverse order, the planet, people and then profitability. So earlier it was regulatory compliances only, the companies were looking for and only seeing from the uh, compliance angle, but now they have, they have already realized that they have to do something for the planets, 
for the next generations and their business goals. The sustainability goals are imbibed into the business goals also. When they invest into the new plant, they take care of the building, the infrastructure is a green building, the, uh, the solars now have already started, the alternate energies they are investing, they see that there is a gender equality is on their board and uh, the people, uh, the people uh, disabled, partially disabled, physically disabled people they take on as employees. The governance part also they are looking into their uh, entire uh, thing. They are having the following the good governance. So these things have already the people, the companies have already realized all these things. And this tone, uh, tone at the top is coming down and I am sure it will come down at the lower level also the SMEs also, even the young generation uh, also seeing that they always prefer uh, some sustainable goods. They see the tags, now the sustainability tags, they are not preferring the plastic bags. They always go for some sustainability material bags. So the things, the mentality of the people is changing and I am sure that over a period of time this also will come true across at all levels. No doubt there is a cost, but that cost is imbibed into the business cost. So that is one part as regards to the how much carbon is emitted. So we are also planning to develop the carbon calculator. So nowadays we all have this Apple watch and we track ki how much uh, steps we are walking. So like that we can have, we are planning to have the carbon emission calculator. So in that, if we input something, ki we have uh, used certain units of electricity and we are traveling by, say, flight, our business class or uh, economic class, from this area to from, we are using this vehicle, diesel or electric vehicle, how much carbon, if we input this data automatically, what is the carbon emitted, the data comes out. So this carbon calculator is already under planning. What was another question? I just can add on to uh, this question, you know, can you know your carbon footprint? You can do it today also. I mean, if you go to flights.google.com and you book a ticket from one location to another, it tells you what is your uh, carbon footprint for that sector. Yeah, it is the all emission factors for uh, traveling by train uh, per kilometer on a diesel or petrol car. They are all there. In fact, there is a website. Uh, if you just Google, you know, I want to calculate my carbon footprint. There is a website which gives you a certificate with a very detailed analysis. It asks you some basic questions. That how big your house is, how much electricity do you consume, what do you eat, how much you travel, how far is your office. So you input that data and you can actually understand almost 90% of accuracy, your own carbon footprints. So there are tools which are already existing. Sahab, you can ask, you know, answer his questions. Okay, why you know these batteries are not standardized or uh, charges are not standardized? So I'll uh, quick, quick, if you don't quick mind, if you don't mind, I'll okay, answer I, that please. question on the mobile, which was asked by someone. Uh, I have spent 20 years of my career in the mobile industry, so it was a big effort to get everyone on a single platform, all the manufacturers, except for Apple, which has its own norms and uh, regulations. All the other manufacturers today have, a sing have come to an understanding and they all use a single type of charger, which is they call the C-type. So, except for Apple, rest everyone is on a single platform as of today. And uh, answering the second question someone raised about the vehicle, uh, uh, you know, carbon offsetting in vehicles. So, you see, in the morning also someone had mentioned that when just by using an EV, if you think you have offset carbon, it is, it is not like that. If you are using electricity to charge that EV and that electricity is being produced by using fossil fuel, so you are back to zero. You know, it's not net zero, it is back to zero. So you also, the, it, the EV needs to be charged using green energy. So that is the next step, which is still not, which, which we are still far away from. Today, all the EVs are being charged by electricity, which is from conventional sources. So Mr. Chaudhary, if you want to add anything to this. No, I, I just wanted to, uh, to comment on an individual basis. So my measuring my carbon footprint, I don't know how much difference I can make. Because it's not that I have choices to go non-carbon non or not. 
I have the same fuels, I have the same electricity coming from the same grid. So I might make my lifestyle maybe 10% here and there. But, but, but the important thing is that this leads people to demand cleaner options. And that will drive society to provide the cleaner options to the individuals. That awareness is very important. Well, that's, that's, that's very, very true. And I'm sure there's a question you know, in everyone's mind, but uh, no one you know, asks that question. And that question is, you know, like when we organize this kind of conferences, you know, what's going to be the footprint? And Kartikeyan Bhai is not here. He talks about, you know, we are talking about footprint, but we should be talking about handprint in the sense that what I can do in order to offset uh, carbon which is emitted. So, you know, we are coming, you know, like to the nearing to the end of this uh, panel. But uh, there's a one quick question, you know, I want to uh, answer, you know, from the panelists. So what are the biggest hurdles, you know, you see in, in, in going company sustaining? Quick. It's, it's a, it's a, I think more a question of uh, understanding uh, uh, what is required and why it is required. See, very often I find, and, and this is maybe a, just a, a, a period of time through which we are going in, but a lot of people are focusing on, especially on the energy transition, decarbonization. Why? Because a regulator is asking for it or investors are asking for it. But I think that one has to internalize why we are doing this. And some, somebody said, or you actually pointed out, that you're actually, you know, it's like taking out an insurance. We take out insurance for our families. In case of an untoward incident, they are looked after. So this investment is also for the future generations. So we have to approach it from that basis and therefore avoid greenwashing. To take uh, what uh, uh, Anindyaji has said uh, further, I would say now the reporting requirements are mandatory. And that is why everyone has started doing the reporting requirements. A lot of uh, people have uh, uh, set up their softwares, the companies, and also ESG rating has also been started. They have developed the softwares for ESG rating. The things are already started taking place. The, however, the challenge is that the data and the accuracy of the data. It is the company, for example, having some 15, 20 plants at different location across India. So to take the data, how much carbon they are generating from different plants, what is water utilization, how the things are happening. So at present, this data, uh, Unless the company is very, very matured and having all the systems in place, it becomes very difficult to understand the accuracy of the data. No doubt it may, over a period of time, they will uh, mature and the accuracy will come. But uh, the accuracy of data at present is uh, really a challenge. Uh, instead of calling it a hurdle, like I said, we are in the business of sustainability. So a lot of people, uh, they would call it as a challenge, but we look at it as an opportunity. So we are uh, setting up a 9,000, I mean, with the investment of 9,500 crore, India's biggest gigawatt hour uh, lithium ion factory, and five uh, gigawatt hour of pack cell manufacturing in the state of Telangana. Uh, we have seen the benefits, you know, of going renewable. Today, 20% of the power that comes in Amar Raja is from renewable sources. And we have some very good uh, targets around it. Now, looking at lithium ion, and it is going to be a critical uh, component when we are talking about climate ambitions. There are certain challenges. Uh, one is about the supply chain. So, even today, there is an over dependence on few geographies, one per country in particular. The other big challenge is availability of skill. When you are setting up a lithium ion factory, starting from the operator, the person who is going to do the research, and the person who is going to run those shop flows. In India, we don't have enough experience and attracting talent from, and these, this talent is in a huge demand right now. There is a huge demand and supply gap. The third thing uh, which I can uh, probably uh, think of is, by the way, this lithium ion uh, unit which we are establishing now, we are looking at 50% renewable to start with, uh, one third women, and there are some tangible business benefits by going this way. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Hurdles, challenges, and opportunities, though, they go hand in hand. I think the biggest challenge that we all face today is awareness. 
among the people, among the common masses, among our uh, colleagues in the office and the family, society. So once uh, our experience has been that once that awareness is created, then it is, you know, a very easy task because uh, nowadays, you know, even p children are being, being made conscious in the schools, in the colleges about sustainability, about what they need to do. So I think the biggest challenge is creating awareness and in the simplest way, you know, uh, conveying that awareness to the common man. And, and, and lastly, advice is something which no one wants to listen, but everyone wants to give. So I will ask panelists to give an advice to individuals, you know, who are sitting in the front in two words, not more than two words, quick advice. How, how, how do we manage sustainability? If you want to give advice to the house here in two words about being sustainable or net zero. Quick. You wanted two words, I'll just say be aware. Be aware. That's it. Two words, kind of difficult, but if I have to start from scratch, benchmarking, benchmark, and second would be a be proactive. Why I say be proactive? Because today is good to have, or tomorrow's must have. We have seen the change in regulations, so it's no more a wish list, it's something which you would have to implement, so better get going on that. I'll put it in three words. Uh, be an example. Very simple. I can say that set the targets and implement the targets. Implement for achievement. That's, that's great. I think uh, we are on time. And as said earlier, it's exactly 55 minutes we took. And I'm, I'm very happy that panelists has give, given their best. And I'm sure you also, you know, like uh, in agreement with what I'm saying. And if you are in agreement with me, I, I demand applause from all of you for the great panel. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we end a panel here. And we'll have a one quick uh, group photograph of the panel here, please.